Okay. I mean, I've worked most of my adult life in political communications. I definitely understand the strategy of getting ahead of a story. Sometimes you just got to get the news out. But yesterday, RFK Jr. proved that sometimes, maybe just keep your mouth shut. I mean, we already know this is a guy who has found himself in the middle, he's put himself in the middle, by the way, of some unusual controversies, to put it diplomatically. Like, say, the strange allegation that he once ate a dog, which he says was really a goat. Or, even more bizarre, the claim he made that a worm ate part of his brain. But incredibly, RFK Jr. has now found a way to one-up himself and all of those stories. In a video that was apparently intended to blunt the impact of a negative news story that had not yet come out, Kennedy casually recounts to Roseanne Barr, of all people, I can't explain it, a wildly bizarre incident that took place 10 years ago. The story goes like this. So one day, while driving to Goshen, New York for a fun day of falconing with his friends, I guess that's fun, as one does, he came across the carcass of a black bear cub, which he says was hit by a minivan ahead of him. So what did he decide to do? Well, I'm gonna let him take it from here for a moment. So I pulled over and I picked up the bear and put him in the back of my van because I was gonna skin the bear and it was very good condition and I was gonna and put the meat in my refrigerator and you can do that in New York City, you can get a bear tag. Uh, for a roadkill bear. He was going to skin the bear. Okay, anyway, the dead bear carcass is in his trunk. So he goes on to enjoy a day with the dead bear, bear carcass in his trunk. He goes on to, for the day of falconing with his friends, obviously. And it was glorious, I'm sure. But then, according to Kennedy, he realizes he's late for a dinner at Peter Luger Steakhouse in Brooklyn. So rather than go home, he drives, and you can see the map there, about an hour and a half with a dead baby bear in his trunk, to Brooklyn for dinner at one of the most famous steakhouses in the country. Of course, the dinner goes late, as dinners often do, and Kennedy says he suddenly realized that he would need to go straight to the airport to catch a flight. So for anyone who's ever stashed a dead bear in the trunk of their car while having dinner but needed to hop on a plane, the next steps may sound obvious. Somebody asked me to get rid of it. I said, let's go put the bear in the Central Park and we'll make it look like he got hit by the bike. <laughs> and fun, funny yeah. for people. So everybody thought that's a great idea. So we went and did that and we thought it would be amusing for whoever found it or something. Everybody thought that's a great idea? <laughs> really? I mean, who am I to question the decision making on the dumping of a bear cock carcass after a day of falconry and fine dining at a steakhouse? But of course, it turned out it wasn't such a great idea. No kidding. The mysterious dead bear in Central Park ended up being a huge national news story. After all, wild bears haven't been spotted in Manhattan in centuries. And here's the thing. The story Kennedy was trying to get ahead of by posting this strange video where I just want to note one more time, Roseanne Barr randomly appears. That story came out this morning and it didn't include nearly the level of granular detail that Kennedy himself provided. The bear incident actually takes up a total of two paragraphs in the story, but they did have a picture. And if you're wondering out there what the photo of RFK Jr. and the dead bear looks like, it ex looks exactly like what you're imagining, I think. I mean, like that. This has been a weird presidential cycle with lots of weirdness, but RFK Jr. has managed to stand out. And there are some losers here in this story, obviously, like the bear, for example, and probably the Kennedy campaign. But perhaps the only winner may be South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, who somehow, impossibly, is now sharing the podium in the competition for the most disturbing and bizarre animal story of the election cycle. Rest in peace, Cricket.